My name is Ivana Hurin, q for alcom and recently I had the chance to interview Dr. Bashara Shukair, the White House Vaccinations Coordinator. We talked about coronavirus vaccinations, about the recent announcement from President Biden, and about getting vaccinated at a football game. Stay tuned for that conversation. Dr. Shukir, first, I want to start off by asking you about monoclonal antibody treatment. I know a lot of people in Alabama have really depended on this treatment, especially because Alabama's vaccination rates are a lot lower than places across the country. So we have heard a little bit about a shortage that is expected of monoclonal antibodies. How long do you expect that shortage to last? And do you expect that to uh, negatively affect a state like Alabama? Well, let me just start by saying that monoclonal antibodies are life-saving treatment, and we continue to provide more and more monoclonal antibody treatments across the country. Uh, we're now averaging 150,000 treatments per week, and those treatments are made available to states across the country. Uh, the new process on allocation that the state that the Department of Health and Human Services is putting together is just simply to ensure that there is an equitable and fair distribution of the monoclonal antibodies across the country. Just keep in mind, we've increased dramatically the number of doses that are available across the country over the last few months. So you don't expect somebody that needs the treatment will not be able to receive the treatment. Well, what we know is we're going to put in a, uh, we're putting a system in place that ensure that there is a fair and equitable distribution of the treatments that's available across the whole country. And that would be based on the number of cases that we're seeing and also utilization uh, that we're seeing across the country. Going to President Biden's announcement about how many workers across the country will be required to either be vaccinated or to show a weekly negative test for coronavirus, how do you expect people, especially in Alabama, who typically really prefer local legislation, how do you expect, how do you expect people to react to that? And also, do you expect that to maybe turn off some people uh, who are very much against federal mandates? Well, look, we have made tremendous progress as a country when it comes to getting this uh, country vaccinated. We've seen more than 210 million people at this point with at least one shot. We have more than 179 million people fully vaccinated. The fact remains, we still have about 80 million people in this country who are eligible to get vaccinated who are not yet vaccinated. And we know that vaccine requirements work, and that's truly the reason behind why vaccine requirements is an integral part of the plan that the president announced last week. Uh, you know, just looking over the last few weeks, when you look at businesses that have implemented vaccine requirements, you'll see significant increase in vaccinations. You know, take Tyson Foods, for example. In one month, they went up from 45% of their workers vaccinated to 72% of their workers vaccinated. Look at United Airlines, went up from 59% to 79% in less than a month. So we know vaccine requirements work and we have to do everything we can, Ivana, to get as many people vaccinated as we can. This is our way to be able to put this pandemic behind us. We have a, a program that is just starting in Alabama, I'm not sure if you're aware, where different schools a, are putting a, a sort of vaccine site at their football games, depending on the days of the games and depending on the different weeks. Every Saturday, one school in the state has got a, uh, a person offering vaccines on site and also is offering a type of incentive there. So what do you think about a program like that, even though people are entering into a football stadium or entering into a tailgate situation where there's a lot of people, but there is still a incentive to get vaccinated there. What do you think about that setup? Well, look, when I look at the people who are still undecided about the vaccine, they're not a homogeneous group. For some folks in that group, they really want to talk to their doctors. They want to learn more about the vaccines. They have legitimate questions, and we want to make sure that we're answering those questions for them. For others, they truly want to get vaccinated. So we want to make sure that we're making it as convenient for them as possible. That's why mobile clinics 
vaccination sites at sports games, all of those are wonderful ideas that would remove the access issue Fred, that is a, a problem for some, uh, some people. For other folks who are still undecided, they were waiting on the FDA to fully approve the vaccines. Well, guess what? Now the FDA has fully approved the Pfizer vaccines for adults. So if you were waiting until the FDA fully approves the vaccine, that time has come. So now you can get vaccinated. For others, it's truly they're still waiting for their employers to tell them they have to get vaccinated. So we have to do everything we can. We have to look at all the tools in our toolbox to make sure that we get more people vaccinated. And look, I do believe that all these efforts are paying off. You'll look at Alabama in the last 10 days alone, more than 54,000 Alabamians have gotten their very first shot in the last 10 days ago. That. So more than 54,000 Alabamians have gotten their very first shot in the last 10 days alone. So we know people are still wanting to get vaccinated. We have to continue to work to get as many people vaccinated as possible. The fact remains, if you're unvaccinated, your chances of getting hospitalized from COVID is 10 times as high compared to whether you're vaccinated. If you're unvaccinated, your chances of dying from COVID are 11-fold as high compared to those who are vaccinated. So we still have work to do, and we'll continue to do this work. How do you plan to specifically target Alabamians who are often in a lot different situation than other people in the country, whether that be Alabamians who live in a rural part of the state, whether that be demographic issues or whether it be political issues, education issues? How do you plan to reach out to those people who maybe you and your team or even the state teams have not been able to get so far? Well, I think it's really important to realize that a lot of the work right now is all about the ground game. It's about engaging with people in their communities by people they know. It's about engaging with faith-based leaders, by community leaders. It's talking to doctors to make sure that Alabamians and folks across the country are having those one-on-one -on -one conversations with their doctors so that they can have their questions answered, they can get facts. It truly is all about the ground game. We have to continue to do everything we can to improve, to continue to improve on the access to the vaccine, continue to build vaccine confidence. And the plan that the president announced last week includes key components that would help take this work to the next level. Of that plan and of those components, what do you think is something that Alabamians or people across the South can look to as an incentive to get vaccinated? Look, I think an important part of the plan is around the vaccine requirements. Um, the Department of Labor will put a, an emergency temporary standard that would require businesses with 100 employees or more to ensure that every one of their workers is either fully vaccinated or is getting tested weekly. This will cover about 80 million workers across the country. Um, this new plan also requires that all healthcare workers who work in settings that receive Medicaid or Medicare reimbursements have to be vaccinated. That covers about 17 million people across the country. And as you all know also, uh, we wanted to make sure the president did sign um, executive orders to make sure that federal employees and federal contractors are also vaccinated. So focusing on these types of strategies on top of what's all has been all along in our toolbox from improving access, building vaccine confidence, all of these efforts have to come together so that we can get the rest of this country vaccinated. Dr. Shukir, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Ivana, for having me again. Thanks. I'm Ivana Hurin, Q for AL.com. Thanks for watching.